Hey guys, it's a me, Pan and Coic 2012, bringing you Dutch pancakes since 2010. But seriously, when I first started making videos, I showed how to collect 255 coins in all the courses where it was possible to do so. And ever since then, I've received the same questions over and over. Why do I stop at 255 coins? Can you collect more than 255? What would happen if you collected more than 255? So, let's answer these questions, once and for all. Now, under normal circumstances, you'd never have to worry about coin limits. After all, the courses are all supposed to have a finite amount of coins. But as you probably know, there are infinite coin glitches. So, what does happen when you try to collect infinite coins? Well, the coin counter will keep track of your coins just as it normally would. Even at 255, it keeps going. Let me repeat that. While you're collecting the coins, the coin counter will neither stop at nor reset at 255 coins. It will just keep counting as if 255 was a regular number. You won't notice anything special at this point. Eventually, you'll reach 999 coins, and it's at this number that the counter stops increasing. Mario can certainly collect more coins at this point, but they won't influence the coin counter at all. And trust me, the coins aren't secretly counting higher while the counter is just stuck at 999. The coins literally do nothing. So the coin counter within the course is pretty simple. It counts to 999 and then stops. However, the coin score that actually gets saved is an entirely different matter, and somewhat of a more complicated one to discuss. But hey, that's what we're here to do. Anyway, once Mario collects a star, he will exit the course, and then the coin counter will count all the way up to the score Mario just got within the course, so somewhere between 0 and 999. Mario receives an extra life at 50, 100, and 150 coins, but at no other increment of 50, so I guess the programmers never expected anyone to get more than 200 coins. Right now, I have to wait all the way for the counter to get to 999. Anyway, the game will compare the coin score you just got to the coin score you already have saved for that course. If the coin score you just got is higher, then it will overwrite your coin score for that course with a new coin score. However, the coin score that gets saved is not necessarily the coin score you just collected. This is where the 255 coin limit comes into play, and where a lot of the confusion comes from. You see, we can calculate the coin score that gets saved using the coin score that you got within the course. Simply take the coin score you got within the course, and modulo by 256, and that will give you the coin score that gets saved. If you're unfamiliar with the modulo operation, you can think about it like this. Take the coin score you got within the course, and divide by 256. This will give you a quotient and a remainder, and it's this remainder that gets saved. So for our example, we collected 999 within the course. When you divide by 256, that gives you 3, remainder 231. And it's 231 that gets saved, since that's the remainder when you divide by 256. If we check our coin records, we can see that yes, 231 was in fact saved after we collected 999 coins. Here's a little table I made to help simplify this information. I couldn't show the whole table because it was too big, but here's the most important parts of it. As you can see, there are 1000 possible coin scores you can get within the course, from 0 to 999, but there are only 256 possible coin scores that can be saved, from 0 to 255. So naturally, multiple coin scores within the course save to the same value, and that's illustrated in this table. For example, a coin score of 0, 256, 512, and 768 all save as 0. A coin score of 231, 487, 743, and 999 all save as 231. And a coin score of 255, 511, and 767 all save as 255. So now you can see why people like me tend to stop at 255 coins. Out of all the possible values that can be saved, 255 is the maximum, and so that's what we want to be saved into our coin records. That means we either have to collect 255, 511, or 767 coins, and out of these three values, 255 comes first. 
so it requires the least amount of effort to get to. And so that's why people stop at 255 coins. One more point I want to stress is that you can actually lower your saved coin score for a course. See, right now I have a record of 231 for Snowman's Land. If I go in, collect 256 coins, and then collect a star, what happens? Well, it compares my record of 256 from within the course to my saved record of 231. Since 256 is greater than 231, it will save a new coin score using the 256. But remember, 256 will save a 0, and so ultimately, it lowers my score from 231 to 0. If I go in and collect 256 coins again, then it will once again be a new record, even though I collected the exact same amount of coins as before, which is because it's comparing the 256 with the 0. Since 256 is higher, it counts as a new record, and so it overwrites my old score of 0 with a new 0. Using this technique, you can achieve any coin record you want between 0 and 255, so long as that course has an infinite coin glitch. Since I have a record of 0 for this course now, it looks like I've never even collected a coin here, despite that I have the 100 coin star. So at this point, I've explained exactly how the coin limits work, but I have yet to explain why the coin limits are there. As we've learned, there are two coin limits. There's the 999 coin limit within the course, and the 255 coin limit in the saveable records. But, why are these coin limits there? Well, the 999 coin limit was put in intentionally by the programmers as a way to cap off the number of coins Mario can collect. Somewhere in the game, there's a line of code like this. If the number of coins exceeds 999, then set the number of coins back equal to 999. So how does this work in practice? Well, let's say Mario has 997 coins and is about to collect a blue coin. Once he collects it, he'll have 1002 coins. So if we look at the code, 1002 is greater than 999, so that becomes true. Therefore, this statement occurs, and the number of coins is set equal to 999. Now all of this is done in less than a frame, so you'd never actually see the intermediate value of 1002. It would go straight from 997 to 999. And of course, if you collected any more coins at this point, the same thing would happen. The counter would go past 999 and then back to 999. So for us, it would just look like it stays at 999. The 255 coin limit, on the other hand, was done unintentionally by the programmers. It's merely a result of how the coin records are stored in memory using bits. To understand the 255 coin limit, we need to understand the binary system, which is what the game uses, whereas we're probably more accustomed to the decimal system. The binary system is base 2, which means it uses zeros and ones to represent numbers. The decimal system is base 10, which means it uses the digits 0 through 9 to represent numbers. To better understand how the binary system works, let's first review how the decimal system works. Here is a typical decimal number. Each digit represents a different number of tens. So we have the units digit, the tens digit, the hundreds digit, the thousands digit, and the ten thousands digit. To compute the value of this number, we multiply each digit by how much that digit is worth. And when we sum these together, we get 28,341. This seems kind of redundant because we're analyzing the decimal system using the decimal system, but it will make more sense when we analyze the binary system. So here is a typical binary number. Note that its digits comprise of only zeros and ones, so instead of calling them digits, we actually call them bits. Each bit stands for a different number of twos, just like before, except instead of tens, now it's twos. So the bits represent 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128 respectively. To compute the value of this number, we simply multiply each bit by how much that bit is worth and sum them all together to get 229. So this is the binary representation of the number 229. Now we can talk about the coin scores. The coin score within the course is represented by 16 bits, whereas the coin score that gets saved is only represented by 8 bits. This means that the coin score within the course has the capacity to hold up to 65,535, even though we know that in practice it will only ever go up to 999. The coin score that gets saved, however, can only hold up to 255. That's why the 255 coin limit's there. 
Using only 8 bits, 255 is the maximum number you can produce. That's why it's impossible to save a score that's higher than 255. Let's look at an example. Let's say you collect 100 coins within the course. This is how it would be represented using the 16 bits. Now let's say you go to save it. You can't save 16 bits using only 8 bits. Some information is going to be lost. So what does it do? It takes the lower 8 bits and saves that. So in this case, you had 100 coins within the course, and that saved as 100 coins. So that seems to make sense. But now let's take a look at a bigger number. Now, let's say you collected 999 coins. This is how it would be represented using the 16 bits. Notice that this time, the 999 is so big that it uses bits besides the lower 8 bits. It has two ones in the upper 8 bits. So when this number goes to save, it takes the lower 8 bits and saves those. Notice that some information was lost. We didn't store the 999 because that used more than 8 bits. Instead, we only stored its lower 8 bits, which is actually the number 231. So that's why different numbers can be saved than you collected within the course. If you collect a number that uses more than the lower 8 bits, as in a number that's 256 or greater, then some of it will be lost when you go to save it, because when you save a number, it only takes the lower 8 bits, and that might not be the entire number. And of course, this process of taking only the lower 8 bits is synonymous with performing modulo 256, as discussed earlier. This explains why different coin values within the course all save as the same value. Here, we can see four distinct coin values, 0, 256, 512, and 768. Notice that they all differ in their upper 8 bits, but their lower 8 bits are the same. So, when we go to save these values, they all save as the same value, since their lower 8 bits match. So by now, I've answered all of your questions concerning the coin limits. But now I have a question. You see, in my videos, I've always collected the maximum coin scores that could be saved. But this begs the question, what would be the maximum coin scores within the courses? Under this condition, we would no longer be bound by 255, so instead we would aim for 999. But can this be achieved? Well, let's walk through the courses. For a Bob on Battlefield, you might think that the best way would be to collect as many coin clones as you could. The thing about coin clones, though, is that each one takes up a slot in memory, and we only have 240 slots to work with. So, long before you reached 999 coins, you would run out of slots, and the game would freeze. Lucky for us, there's a second infinite coin glitch in this course, the breaking slash disappearing cork box glitch. If we break a cork box right as it disappears, then we get its three coins and the box is back. With this technique, there's no entropy. There's nothing left over each time that would build up, like the coin clones. So this method is completely renewable. Consequently, we can just keep doing this until we reach 999 coins. And therefore, 999 is the maximum we can collect within Bob on Battlefield. For Womp's Fortress, we can use the same strategy. Just keep breaking the cork box until we have 999 coins. You don't even need to collect any other coins on the course. Then we get into the courses without infinite coin glitches. For Jolly Roger Bay, the limit is just 104, since that's how many coins there are in the course naturally. There's no infinite coin glitches here to make more. And no, you cannot use the shell to clone coins. You can bring the shell out of water, but it's still real. It won't turn into other objects, and there's no loading points in Jolly Roger Bay to go through, so you cannot use the shell to surpass 104. Similarly, for Cool Cool Mountain, the most we can get is 154, since there's no infinite coin glitches here either. Same thing for Big Boo's Haunt. No infinite coin glitch, so we're bound to 151. Just make sure you don't pick the first star, otherwise you won't have access to the booze in the merry-go-round. Now, I know that I showed it was possible to clone a coin in this course, but we can't actually use that to get infinite coins. There are two problems. First, the crazy box doesn't respawn, so unlike the quirk boxes or bob -oms, we can't use it over and over. At best, we can only get one clone out of it. And secondly, there are no good coins to clone in this course. Ideally, we'd want a line or ring of coins, but in this course, all we have are enemy coins. Here, I'll demonstrate the difference between the two scenarios. When Mario clones a coin from a ring or line, he can collect the clone, 
and then you can leave and come back, and all of those coins will regenerate, so you can collect all of those. So essentially, he's collecting an extra coin. In the second scenario, Mario clones a coin from an enemy, but notice that this time, the coins from the enemy don't regenerate from leaving and coming back. They only load once when the enemy dies. And so, essentially, Mario's just collecting one of those coins in a different location, rather than collecting an extra coin. As you can see, Mario collected 4 coins in the former scenario, but only 3 coins in the latter. So this doesn't actually help us get any extra coins. In fact, we're actually losing 5 coins, since we never actually explode the crazy box. For Hazy Maze Cave, there are also no infinite coin glitches, so we're stuck at 139. I tried to find an infinite coin glitch using the swoopers, but it didn't really pan out. Get it? Pan? Panagoic? Let's just go to the next course. And finally, for Lethal Lava Land, there are no infinite coin glitches, so the most you can get is 133. But be careful about that last bully. If you miss this coin, you have to do it all over again. For Shifting Sandland, we can get to 999 just by using the Quirk Box glitch again, like we did for Bob and Battlefield and Womp's Fortress. Pretty standard. We don't even need to enter the pyramid. For Dire Dire Docks, our only infinite coin method is cloning, but here we actually can get to 999 coins doing it. You see, when we go through the loading point, the clones disappear, and so they won't build up like they would in Bob and Battlefield. So, using cloning, we actually can get all the way up to 999 coins. For Snowman's Land, we can just duplicate money bags, and kill them off periodically until we get up to 999 coins. Just don't make too many money bags at once or weird things can happen. Like look, now everyone's shadow is a white square that's in front of everything else? That doesn't make any sense. And we lost the HUD, and what was that blue thing? Oh great, and now the game froze. I still want to know what that blue thing was though. For Wet Dry World, we can get to 999 coins the same way we did in Dire Dire Docks. The loading point causes the clones to disappear, so we can just keep cloning over and over until we get to 999. For Tall Tall Mountain, our only infinite coin method is cloning, and so the clones will build up. But, there's a solution. Before the game freezes, we just need to enter the slide, and when we come out, all the clones will be gone. Essentially, the course just resets, and so using this method, we can make as many clones as we want, and get all the way to 999 coins. And then for Tiny Huge Island, we can just perform the Piranha Plant glitch infinite times. Nothing builds up each time, so there's no problem getting to 999 coins. And now for the final two courses. This is where things get interesting. Up until now, the maximum coin scores within the courses have all been pretty simple. Either they were the regular coin limits when there were no infinite coin glitches, or they were 999 when there were infinite coin glitches, since we could use those infinite coin glitches an unlimited number of times. But not here. These last two courses both have an infinite coin glitch, namely coin cloning, but there's no way to avoid the buildup of clones. There's no court box, so that we can use that method instead. There's no loading points to unload the clones, and there's no slide to reset the course. So for these last two courses, we'll be able to use cloning to get past their normal coin limits, but not all the way up to 999. Instead, we'll end up having to stop at what will seem like a completely arbitrary number, but it will in fact be the maximum coin score within the course. So, let's get to it. Our goal is to fit as many coin clones as possible. Since each clone takes up a slot in memory, we're going to want to free up as many slots as we can. So in addition to collecting all of the coins on the course, we're also going to collect all of the 1-ups. Each 1-up occupies a slot, so by collecting it, we're freeing up a slot for another coin clone. Technically, we don't actually have to collect the 1-up, we just need to unload it. So for 1-ups that appear and then run away from Mario, we can just let those disappear, since that will unload them. But for the 1-ups that sit there on the course, and the ones that home in on Mario, we need to collect those, since those never disappear. I've also collected the 100 coin star, because that counts as an object. So at this point, all that's left are these 5 coins. These are actually the only clonable coins in the entire course. I mean, technically you could clone coins from an enemy or an item block, but as I mentioned earlier, that wouldn't actually benefit you at all. 
Anyway, right now I cloned a bob -omb, and I brought it all the way to this cage. Why? Well, you'll find out in 155 coins from now. It'll all come together. But right now we can start cloning coins. Yay! So as we're cloning, each clone will occupy a slot in memory that can no longer be used. You may have noticed that I have the object counter displayed, which will help explain what's going on. You can see that it's steadily increasing as I clone the coins. Before, I mentioned that there are 240 slots in all, but it's actually a little more complicated than that. For some reason, each course seems to have its own unique upper bound on how many slots can be used. For Tick Tock Clock, this number is 239. That means at most, we can fit 239 objects. If we try to load any more, the game would freeze, and so our goal is to fit as many clones as we can without going over 239. But as we get closer to the end, things are going to get more complicated and more difficult. We're going to have to be super precise in order to not freeze the game prematurely. So at this point, I'm actually going to collect four of the five remaining coins on the course. Technically, we only need one coin to clone from, so we could have done this at any point. It's just that cloning from one coin is a lot more difficult than cloning from five, so I prolonged it as long as I could. We're also about to face another problem. You see, up until now, I've been grabbing fake bob -omb's by holding them over the edge, and then grabbing them when they explode naturally. But when bob -omb's explode naturally, they produce a lot of smoke right at the end, and so the smoke and explosion together use nine object slots. But if you look at the object counter, you can see that we only have eight object slots left to work with. So from now on, we need to explode the bob -omb's prematurely by throwing them, which only uses four object slots. But in order to not get hit by the bob -omb's explosion, we need to be uphill from it. Luckily, there's a little bump on this clock part that allows Mario to be slightly higher than the bob -omb. So using this technique, we can make a couple more clones until we don't even have four slots to work with. At this point, we only have three more slots, so we can't even grab a fake bob -omb by setting it off prematurely. I also have to be careful how I move around, because even a tiny bit of dust could freeze the game. The only way I can make another clone is by grabbing a fake bob -omb whose fuse never even went off. If only I had the foresight to position the bob -omb somewhere where I could pull off a tricky maneuver like that. Oh wait, I did! So, as I'm doing this, keep in mind that I can only grab a fake bob -omb if it explodes on a surface lower than Mario. Now watch. And there we go! Now we only have two slots left, and that is not enough to grab another fake bob -omb. So 279 is the maximum coin score within TikTok Clock. As a side note, there are actually two ways to unload a bob -omb using less than three slots. One way is to boil the bob -omb. So you might be wondering, why didn't I use this when I went for the maximum coin score in Bowser in the Fire Sea? You can grab the bob -omb while it's boiling, but you can't grab it fake. To grab it during that, I had to use a dive, but only grabs on land can be used to grab an object fake. Dives and water grabs just don't work. The second way to unload a bob -omb using less than three slots is at the death barrier. In a previous video, I showed that you actually can grab a fake bob -omb this way. However, you die immediately afterwards, so there'd be no way to clone a coin out of it. One more note is that you might be wondering why I didn't collect the last coin. After all, when we got to 279, there was still one coin left on the course. The problem is that if you try to collect it, the game freezes, so you can't actually get it. It's kind of like a trap. If you get greedy and try to get the last coin, you can't finish the level. And then lastly, there's Rainbow Ride. Our strategy for this course will be just like the one we used for Tic Tac Clock. First, we'll sweep through the course and collect every coin, get everyone up, kill every enemy, and collect the 100 coin star. And don't worry about that extra information on the bottom right. It's a side effect of showing the object count. That information is actually debug information about Chukya, so it'll go away as soon as we kill him. We also have to make sure to destroy this box. That counts as an object and so we can fit an extra coin clone by getting rid of it. Now, an interesting thing about this course is that it has a cannon. Cannons count as two objects. There's the base, which is the blue part with the question marks, and the shaft, which is the black cylindrical part. 
but if the cannon hasn't been activated yet, then the cannon isn't there. All that's there is the cannon lid, which is one object. So actually, activating the cannon causes an additional object that we can never get rid of. So that means we can only get the maximum coin score here before we activate the cannon. If you've already activated it, then you can never get the coin score we're about to get now. You'd always be at most one coin short. So that means that we can't use the cannon to get to the floating island. Instead, we have to use backward long jumping. But this is tool assisted, so that's not a problem. Note that we don't actually need to open item blocks that contain stars, like the one on the island. Before we open an item block, the item block is one object. After we open it, the star is one object. So either way it counts as one object. We'd have the same number of slots to use either way, unlike the cannon. So by this point, I've minimized the number of objects on the course, and I've collected every coin other than these eight, since these are the ones we'll use for cloning. But before we begin cloning, there's one more thing we need to do. I'll give you a hint. It involves cloning a bob -omb and placing it somewhere so we can pull off a tricky maneuver with it later. But that's all I'm gonna say about it. I mean, you should know if you've been paying attention. And now we can begin the cloning of coins. Rainbow Ride can fit a maximum of 227 objects. So believe me, we need to clone a lot of coins. So during this time, let's talk about objects. There are actually two tiers of objects in Super Mario 64. There are important objects and unimportant objects. Basically, all of the objects are important except for the special effects, like the smoke from a lava burn, the yellow stars from a ground pound, the proof from collecting a star, and the glow around the Koopa shell. So what's the distinction between these two tiers? Well, let's say all of the object slots are filled and you try to load a new object. This new object could be important or unimportant, it doesn't matter. Now, instead of freezing, the game will first check if any of the objects already loaded are unimportant. If it finds one, then that unimportant object will give up its slot for the new object. And if there are no unimportant objects to replace, then the game freezes. This helps prevent the game from freezing, since it will only freeze if the slots are all filled with important objects. The wind on the ship actually counts as 30 unimportant objects that are constantly loading and unloading. So, once we have less than 30 slots left, the wind particles will duke it out for those remaining slots, replacing each other constantly. You'll be able to tell because there will be less wind at once, and the particles won't be around as long. But it's important that we have at least one slot for the wind particles to battle for. Otherwise, the game would freeze, since they'd have nowhere to load to. They need one, just so that they can keep overriding that one slot. So now, I'm going to collect 7 of the 8 remaining coins. I actually can't wait any longer, otherwise the presence of the coins and the twinkle from collecting them would freeze the game. And now back to cloning, but only for a little bit, because like in TikTok Clock, once we only have 8 slots left, we need to explode the babam prematurely. I also want to do it where there's no wind, because the wind needs that one slot. So doing it in the presence of the wind would be like using 5 slots instead of 4. So to do this, I lure the bob -omb to the front of the ship, and then throw it like so. Using this, we can fit in a couple more clones. So at this point, I only have 4 slots left, and the premature bob -omb explosion uses 4 slots. So not only can there be no wind during the explosion, I also can't have that last coin loaded at that time. I just cloned the coin, so it's not there at the moment, but I have to be careful to let the bob -omb respawn without letting the coin respawn, and there's only a really small margin to do that. Now I can make one more coin clone, and there we go. Now I only have three slots left. Look at the wind. Only three wind particles can fit at once, and they don't last for very long because they keep getting replaced by newly loading wind particles. But anyway, now that I only have three slots left, I can go back to that bob -omb I placed earlier. I don't have to pull off nearly as tricky a stunt as I did last time, but still, I had to look all over this course to find a spot that would work for this. But now here's the catch. We can't actually get back to the ship, because that would involve going past the blue flame on that rotating platform. That blue flame uses 17 object slots so that would freeze the game. Luckily, we don't need to go all the way back to the ship. This platform right here is close enough so that we can load the last coin from here. And there we go. We only have two slots left, 
So like I explained earlier, we can't grab any more fake bob -oms, and so we can't make any more clones. Therefore, the maximum coin score we can get in Rainbow Ride is 290. Now watch Mario collect the star. There's no proof, and the star hardly has any twinkles behind it. That's how few object slots we have left. So there you go. That's the maximum coin score within each of the 15 courses. Here's a nifty little table I made that organizes all of this information. It shows the maximum coin score for every course, both the saveable coin score and the coin score within the course. It's also color-coded by why that's the maximum. Well, that's everything I've ever wanted to tell you about the coin limits. So, thanks for watching!